11.30, let's get started. Uh, bird for today, the Papuan frogmouth. This one living in Australia. Uh, these birds, as you might imagine, very rare to see them because unless you catch them at precisely the right angle, they look like a log and not a bird. Um, fairly effective camouflage and a rather prehistoric looking creature. So lots to do today, uh, but first, uh, are there any questions uh, to get us started? Yeah. I was kind of confused on what the required homework was for today. In New York, you're reading a sign that's on the calendar, and you're supposed to do quiz. I didn't. I was wondering if I get a clarification on what the two gates were required in homeworks. Yes, so all graded work appears on the course calendar webpage. Yes. Um, so the review quiz is just a review exercise, not graded work. Um, the graded quizzes are named for the week's material that they cover. So the week one quiz will go out on Monday, be due Tuesday, cover things from uh, Wednesday and today. And so every Monday, uh, except midterm break and, and the last couple weeks of the term, there'll be a quiz on the previous week's material. Thank you. Uh, note about the, the assigned reading. I think that they can be useful uh, either as preparation before class or as a way to review the material after class. Um, and I encourage you to use them in whichever way uh, works better for you. Uh, other questions? All right. So uh, let's talk some more about bits and bytes. <laughs> so uh, I will I will collect the we'll, we'll use the cards more this this class, but I will need them back uh, on your way out because you are not the only uh, group of folks using them. So if you take yours with you, uh, someone in another class will not have one. Uh, so all right. We're going to be using C in this class, uh, and unlike say Java or Python, uh, C um, lets the programmer get very close to memory. And that how you program in C uh, is very closely tied to how memory is actually structured, how data is actually represented uh, in the underlying memory. And so first, let's talk about what memory is in terms of how it is structured. So we're going to treat memory as a long array of individually addressed bytes. So I call each of these things in this array of memory a cell or a location. And It's going to hold one byte. And remember how many bits are in a byte? Exactly. So one byte, eight bits. And so each of these cells in our in memory is going to hold one byte. And these cells, I said uniquely addressable, which means each of these cells is going to have a name. That name is going to be just a number, a numerical address, just like an index into an array. And we're going to have a lot of these cells. And the, kind of the, the lowest one will have an address of 0 for some number of zeros. Highest one, an address of all x, kind of the, uh, from address of the, that's in binary, all zeros, to an address of all ones. And uh, this range, this range of addresses is what's called the address space. And if we want to refer to some data in memory, we're going to refer to it by the address of where that data is stored the index in this array. So one question is, how big 
is an address space. How many different cells do we have? This is based on the number of bits in the address. So, the number of bits in a memory address determines the size of our address space. So we can see a kind of small example of this in this uh, little memory here. So this is a memory that has addresses that are three bits. So just, just three zeros or ones. And with these three different bits, we can give kind of eight names, eight indexes to places in memory. Because we can create eight different values using three bits. And then each of these spots in memory is going to store one byte. Why are all these bytes kind of two, two letters or numbers? Yes. Yeah, so I'm representing them in hexadecimal. So I have two hexadecimal digits in each of these cells of memory. Yeah. And, and one hexadecimal digit is represented by four bits. Exactly. So if a hexadecimal digit, as we talked about Wednesday, takes four bits, two of them take eight bits, and eight bits is one byte. So typically, when we're just looking at kind of raw values in memory, each of these cells, each of these bytes in memory will be two hexadecimal digits. It's one of the reasons why hexadecimal is very useful, as we can, it's an, uh, always the same number of hexadecimal digits to record a value of a byte, whereas if we were in base 10, maybe it would not always be the same number of digits. What are your questions on this so far? All right, modern computers don't have three bits in an address. Uh, in this course, we're going to be thinking about 32-bit and 64-bit systems. And another term for this amount of bits in a memory address is the word size of the system. And so you may have heard of a 32-bit operating system or a 64-bit, you may have seen this in, in different places. This is referring to the size of a memory address on that system. And so if we have a 64-bit system, we have potentially Two to the 64 different addresses. That's enough different addresses to uh, address one bi a billion billion different bytes. So we really have kind of as much address space as we could, way more than we could possibly use on a on a modern 64-bit system. Sorry, can you explain a little more why it's two to 64? Is it because of binaries? That's exactly it. That if we, uh, in the small example of here, we have three bits, and each bit can be one or zero. So two possibilities for the first digit times two for the second times two to the th for the third digit that gives us two to the three. So whenever we're thinking about a binary number, however many digits it is, that gives us two to that number of digits. Different values we can make with with that many bits. Other questions? All right, so not all data in memory is going to be one byte in size. We're going to have some, some data that, that's bigger than that. And if we think about a type of data and the size, uh, when we're programming in C, uh, we have Type char, C H A R, which is going to be one byte in size. It's a one byte integer 
fact is, is this character type. Um, we have a short for a two byte integer, an int, which is a four byte integer, a long, which is an eight byte integer, and this is on a 64 bit system. And the system is what determines how large these types are. Other languages like Java, an int is the same no matter where you're running your Java program. Not true in C. The system that you're running on can, do, can influence the size of these. For example, a long will be four bytes on a 32-bit system. And as you can imagine, this is why some software will only work on a 32-bit or a 64-bit system and not both, because the code just behaves differently. We also, in C, have an explicit type for a memory address. We can say something like R star asterisk, and this means It's an address of a pair. And we can similarly have an int star, which is the address of an int. And how would we know what size these par star int star types are? How many bytes? Might these take up? Well, it has to be able to store 264 different like, possible addresses, right? So, how many bytes that is? Yeah, it is just the word size of the system. Because the word size is the number of bits in a memory address. These pointers, they are memory addresses. They are just a location in our big array of bytes where some data is stored. So, on our 64 bit systems, these would both be 8 and 4 on a 32-bit 32, 32 system. What that means is a memory address of 32 bits. Question? Sorry, I gave it a thought that's like a reason. Yeah. So, I don't quite understand. You can get computers that have a much wider variety of memory sizes, not just 64 and 32. Yet yeah, this makes it seem as though all computers that we use today have something like 264 different like, possible spaces and they're all the same size. Yes, so uh, this is uh, kind of jumping ahead to uh, where we're headed um, in, the, in the second half of the course. Uh, but this view of memory, where we have two of the 64 different addresses, is a convenient lie. Um, and it's a lie that actually the operating system tells programs, this is the memory you have. And you're right, different computers might have uh, 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes or 2 gigabytes of actual physical memory. And that's orders of magnitude smaller than, than this exabytes. No. And so this is this sort of uh, virtual or pretend version of memory that's going to make it very convenient for if I want to write a program, I just know that I can use these different addresses and actually the system is going to handle how that translates to the physical memory. Yeah? Sorry, I'm still a little bit confused why char star uh, needs to be bytes. Yeah, so these stars indicate that they are the address of whatever comes before the star. And so that means them both a memory address, which means they're just going to be however big a memory address is on the system we're talking about, regardless of what is stored at the address that they, they point to. Does that make sense? Other questions? All right, so 
Now we have memory is bigger at bytes. We have different types of things that are different sizes, but we still need to know there are some details we have to iron out about how we actually refer to things in memory and how we actually arrange the bytes inside. So one question is, well, we have an int. It takes four bytes. Uh, which, and we say each different byte has its own address. Which address do we use as the address of that int? That if we have, uh, say, the number 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, we have uh, eight hexadecimal digits, that's four bytes. This is our four byte integer. We're going to say that the address of a quantity, let me put this, oh, there it is. This is the stored value with the address. Um, this is the stored value. Okay. And we're going to say that the the address of some multi-byte. A uh, piece of data is going to be the address, the lowest address of the bytes that make up that, that piece of data. So let's say that the address is here, or hex 100, 101, 102, and 103. And so if we were storing this integer here, its address would be hex 100, the lowest of the bytes that it's stored in. So that gets to one of these issues. How, which address do we use to refer to something? Doesn't answer, how do we arrange these four bytes into these four spots? And uh, there's an unfortunate sort of vestige of history that there is no one answer to this. Different systems arrange them different ways because in the uh, Early days of computing, different hardware designers made different decisions, and we are kind of uh, the inheritors of, of this chaos. So there are two two ways that we arrange bytes, and it's basically this way or this way. We either start with Kind of the, the most significant, the largest one, or we start with the smallest one. So let me define the what the term that I just used. This byte here, this 04, is sort of the, the ones place, the smallest digits in this number. And we call this the The least significant byte. Similarly, we'd say that 0, 3, 0, 4 are the two least significant bytes, just as a way to refer to bytes within, within some number. And that makes 01 the most significant. So this brings us to the two ways that we can arrange these bytes in memory. We have little endian, which is going to have us start with uh, the least significant byte first. Whereas big endian is most significant first. 
So to put it in this example, if we were doing little endian, that says the, the least significant byte comes first in memory. So we have 0, 4 here, and then we go through the bytes in that order, 0, 3, 0, 2, finally 0, 1. So little endian says least significant byte goes, and goes first, meaning the lowest memory address. So this would be in little endian order. And big endian order would just have them in reverse. We'd start with the most significant byte in the lowest memory address. And we'd see 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and 0, 4. What are your questions about this ending in this idea? Yeah. You mentioned that like hardware designers make different choices back when this was happening. Like, what's the hardware trade-off here, I guess, that, that would you know encourage them or incentivize them to make one choice or the other? I mean that that is the worst part. There's no difference. It's just which order you put them in, and you've got to choose an order, and different people happen to choose different orders, and no one got together and was like, all right, we're all gonna do this one way. Um, so yes, very unsatisfying that these are kind of equivalent strategies that you are reading chunks of memory um, either way. And most of the time, we don't have to think about this unless we're sending data between two systems that have different endings. Then we really have to think about it. Um, so to give some, some concrete examples. Um, little Indian is used by Intel, um, Android, iOS. Big Indian, you'll often see uh, in uh, network uh, electronics, my store data in Big Indian. Uh, Oracle and IBM is historically also produced hardware that used big end. Okay. All right, I think we have time for a little bit of practice. So, all right, we'll start with this one. If our word size in the machine is 64 bits, uh, which is true, 64 bits is the size of a pointer, 64 bits is the size of an integer. Fingers covering uh, the, the corner. Okay, thank there. you. There we go. <laughs> C is popular, but there's uh, some other other thing about this as well. So go ahead and discuss with your neighbors uh, what you think is true and what is false. Yes. 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 Yes.
If you wish to. Oh, you should. Yeah, should. All right. And we've settled on indeed 64 bit size of a memory address. Pointer is a memory address, not necessarily the size of an edge. Yes? So a cell or location holds one byte. So what is the word size of a system? The word size is the number of bits in a memory address. In the memory address, okay. So, so for example, you, know, you don't think you erased it, but we had this beautiful array on the left, we had mm -hmm. the addresses, so, okay, got it. And so is a pointer um, kind of a synonym for an address? Uh, a, a, all a pointer is, is a memory address. Okay. These are exactly the same thing, yes. Um, so I noticed in your chart there, it says mm -hmm. that longs are four bytes long on a 32-bit system, but so are ints. So like, what's the advantage of using a long over an int in a 32-bit environment? Uh, like, you know, I typically see them used to store more, like one larger digits. Yeah, so at least one advantage, advantage with a long is you're saying kind of make this the biggest kind of integer on whatever system. You're running. So on 32-bit, it's as big as an index, as, as big as integers I get in these uh, fundamental types. But on a 64-bit system, it will okay. store uh, a, a wider range of numbers. Other questions? All right. So there are some more uh, practice exercises in the notes, but. I do want to uh, use remaining time, some of our remaining time to talk about C pointers, um, which we've gotten into a little bit already. So um, here in this spreadsheet, I have created this memory diagram. And I'll, I'll be using uh, this kind of diagram um, uh, at several points, so I uh, want to take some time to explain how this works. So I had drawn on the board, memory is like a long vertical array. And what I've done in this diagram is take chunks of that vertical array and put them on a row. And so I have the address of the start of the row is here on the left. And so this is address 0, address one, address two, address three, and then it zigzags back over to the second row for address four, five, six, and seven. And I've taken this long vertical uh, representation of memory and kind of broken it, uh, separated it into these rows so that we can actually see a larger chunk of memory, um, uh, visualize a larger chunk of memory at one time. And this is also specifically on a 32-bit system, this example, uh, which is why each row is four bytes. 
and I've separated each row into kind of one word of memory. So just to, and this kind of an example of how, uh, how this would work, I've kind of arbitrarily said, all right, there's a pointer stored at address zero. A pointer on a 32-bit system is four bytes. And uh, it being a pointer, we interpret the value stored there as a memory address. So the value eight is stored there. This is a little Indian system, so our least significant byte comes first. So that means that this pointer refers to the quantity that's stored at address eight. And how the, what's stored at address eight is interpreted depends on the type of the pointer. So, so here we can have something that points to an integer, something that points to uh, a character. Uh, we can also have something that points to another pointer. So if this uh, thing that's stored at eight itself points to some value stored at address 20, then uh, we can kind of follow this chain of, of, of pointers through memory. At address 10 here, we have some bytes in memory, but unless we have some type associated with them, some part of code that's telling us how these bytes are interpreted, we just have no idea of what it is, besides the fact that it's the hex value is zero to C. All right, ask me questions about this diagram. Yes? Uh, so the system knows it because it's running some code that interprets the value there as an integer. Some other code can interpret it in some other way. Uh, so in this example, I'm saying, okay, whatever code put these values in memory is interpreting what's there as an, as an integer, but there's nothing in memory that says that. It's only the operations that our system executes, only at that point are values in memory interpreted uh, as being some specific type. Yes? So when a line is like a pointer to a different address, that's because like code is saying it's a pointer? Exactly. Yes, the, uh, if something is a pointer, it's because we're interpreting the values there as a memory address. What other questions do you have? Yes? If you're trying to store an int, uh, some int that is larger than, for example, 2 to the uh, 64th or whatever, like, how, how does that work? So, um, for that, you can't rely on these basic types. Uh, so you have to have some, I mean, there are different ways to implement it, but you have to implement some structure that can, uh, that can represent that. So uh, as one like really uh, crude approach, you might store it as a string, and then every time you need to do math, like do all the stuff you need to do to make it, to figure out what number it is. Um, but yeah, you have to, you have to do some more work. Other questions? Yes. So, um, in the program, I think you just set a variable to something, and you're not using a pointer. Like, how does it like does it just keep the pointer in like? Uh, like, how does it get data back to that? Yes. So. This is an excellent question and kind of brings me to my uh, next example here. So I again have the same, uh, the same style of memory diagram. Uh, and this time I have some C code uh, along the right here to go with it. So first I have this int star p semicolon. It just declares a variable named p that is a pointer to an int an int star as its type. 
And there's nothing in the code that tells you where in memory P will be located. Uh, the compiler slash the operating system is determining this. The, the, in C, you know, I'm not saying, okay, this local variable is stored at this exact address. Um, but for this example, I've, I've just said, okay, P is going to be located at address four. And so when you uh, declare a variable, say, in this next line, and x equals five, again, it's just going to be put somewhere in memory. And we'll see later in the term, um, when we're thinking about local variables in a, in a function, where do they go, there is kind of more structure. It's not just anywhere in, in memory. And we'll, and we'll see how that all works. Uh, but x, that's going to be stored at address 14. I decide arbitrarily. Um, and y equals 2 will be stored at address 24. Question? Then we have a uh, very uh, C type uh, line of code, P equals ampersand X semicolon. And this ampersand is what's called the address of operator. Which I think is, uh, which just means give me a pointer to the thing that the ampersand is being applied to. So it's give me the address of this thing. So when I say P equals ampersand X, when we have an assignment in C, uh, with um, uh, an equal sign, We will think of the right hand side, some value, we compute what that is, and then the left hand side tells us the location where we're putting that value in memory. And so this P says put it wherever we're keeping the variable P in memory, and the right hand side says the address of X. So that's why we have P is hex 14, the location, the address in memory where X is stored. Our next line, Y equals one plus star P. This is something that takes some getting used to about C syntax. Our asterisk means different things based on the context. So it can mean multiplication. When we multiply two numbers, we use an asterisk for that. When it's part of a type, it indicates that this type is a pointer to whatever is to the left of the asterisk. And when used as part of an expression, it is what's called the dereference operator. What it says here. It says, Treat P as a memory address and give me the value in memory stored there. So it's like follow the pointer P to wherever that leads and retrieve the value from memory there. So in this case, we follow the pointer P to address 14, retrieve the value stored there. P is a pointer to an integer, so we retrieve the four bytes stored there and treat them as an integer. And then we add one to that and store the result where y is stored. So that would change this to not quite that. 0, 6. Yes? What is the advantage of using this index um, in contrast to y equals 1 plus x? So in this small toy example, we don't, uh, we already have x, so we wouldn't need to use p to refer to it. Um, but one, uh, as we'll see, pointers, we can store things in actually different regions of memory. We'll talk about this on Monday. Um, and uh, all the variables that I have in this example are stored in a region called the stack. They are automatically put there and they're automatically thrown away. And if we ever want data that 
isn't automatically created and thrown away like this that we have more control over. Uh, we'll need to put it in a different part of memory called the heap, and we have to use pointers for that. Yes? Would you remove the asterisk and it would just y equals 1 plus p? Would it just be added 1 to the address? Yes, so the compiler would at least tell you that this is probably a bad idea. It might give an error. I'd have to, to test it. I don't remember the top of my head. But you could explicitly say, OK, treat p as an integer. So it would treat the memory address as an integer and add 1 to it and put the result in y. And this is like, so this is one of the reasons C is dangerous. It, it gets out of the programmer's way, even if the programmer is headed right off the cliff. And it's just like, you do whatever you want, uh, even if it's, it's terrible, terrible damage. Other questions? So we've seen that star p on the right-hand side of an assignment kind of retrieves the value stored at that pointer. Star p can also appear on the left-hand side of uh, an assignment, where if we had star p equals uh, 240, that says, OK, 240 is the, the, the right-hand side. Uh, that's the value. And the left-hand side isn't p. It's where p points to. So it says, take 240 and put it wherever p points to. So that's going to uh, actually modify x, since p points to where x is stored, and will uh, change x to be 240. Yes? What would be the, like, what if you wanted to adjust the, in the value of, like, the address directly? Could you, could you set star p to be like a location in memory directly instead of just uh, editing the value? Uh, so you're saying, what if we wanted to have p point to somewhere else? Yeah, like what if we wanted p to point to location 240? Uh, yes, we could just do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just set p, and so now the location is where p is stored rather than where p points to. Because the asterisk means follow the pointer. To where, where it refers to it. Yes? So if P were pointing to a pointer and that pointer were pointing to another pointer, would it continue to follow until it reaches the value or would it just return an address or a pointer? Uh, each application of this asterisk, of this dereference, follows a pointer once. Okay. So you would need an asterisk for kind of each okay. chain of this pointer to pointer to pointer you, you want it to, to unravel. Yeah. So in that scenario where you just say P, the location for which p points doesn't change, it's just where p is. Um, so when we had star p, that changed the value that p points to, it changed x. If we had p equals 240, that changes p, which p is a memory address. Now p points to address 240, so it does change where p points to. Other questions? All right, so we will, yeah, so there's um, uh, lab zero is uh, out today. Uh, the material from Monday's lecture um, is more stuff about C that you'll need for the lab. Uh, so what I uh, like you to do, or, or encourage you to do before Monday, is to get to the point where you have like downloaded and compiled and run the provided tests. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have uh, time to uh, demonstrate them now. There are step-by-step -step instructions in the notes that are posted for today. And so please come Monday with any questions or, or problems that you run into there. Um, what I'd like to use our last few minutes for or is another practice problem. Where we have some C code doing silly things with pointers. 
and let you to take uh, a couple minutes and try and work out what this code will do and what it will print out. Um, one thing I should say about this printing out, printf is short for print format, and it will print the string that you include, uh, that, that you pass in, but then you can give it these percent somethings, and those are kind of placeholders that will get filled in with other arguments that you give to print it. So this percent %d says fill this in with an integer, percent %d fill this in with an integer, and then I give it the first integer goes to the first percent %d, second integer goes to the second percent %d. And I'll talk more about kind of, um, or yeah, you know, I'll talk a little more about, about printf on, on Monday, but it's just going to, this is what it, it looks like to uh, print out a equals the value of a, b equals the value of b uh, in c. All right, a variety of opinions, so uh, uh, a couple minutes to discuss with your neighbors what this code is actually doing. So, all right, it is, it is 1, 1.40, so unfortunately, Yes, it is, in this case, it will be 5, it will be 25. Get started on lab 0. I will see you on Monday. I remember introductory survey on Moodle.